hi there. Sally Mann hasn't made life easy for herself. She chooses to use an unwieldy century-old 8x10 view camera and also in the digital age makes use of a 150-year-old photographic process. Early on in her career, she took on personal subjects like photographing her children. When these photographs were published, her work was described as immoral. Later, when she photographed the South and Civil War battlefields, she was accused of sentimentality. When she attempted to confront the racial complexities of the South, she was accused of exploiting her black male subjects and protecting her white Southern identity. The most consistent characteristic of her work is her pursuit of beauty. Instead of following the trend towards conceptual interpretation, she has held on to a theme of aesthetic elegance. Along with the criticism has come a claim. Time magazine ranked her as America's best photographer. She has published 15 books and is represented by the prestigious Gogosian Gallery in New York. Mann was introduced to photography by her father. She said that she took up photography at school so that she could be alone in the darkroom with her boyfriend. She studied 19th century English literature and poetry while at the same time honing her skills as a photographer. While at Bennington College, she met and proposed to the guy who would become her husband, Larry Mann. I remember first noticing her work in 1988 when she published her first book called At Twelve. The portraits of southern girls on the edge of womanhood are gentle but also revealing about this confused stage in development. Her subjects are uncertain of their identity. They are young girls, but at the same time, they are discovering their sexuality. The controversy around man and her work started soon after she published her second book called Immediate Family in 1992. Her images portray her children as innocents, as if they've just stepped out of the Garden of Eden. They are exploring the realities and mysteries of life on her family's farm near Lexington, Virginia. Mann photographed her three young children, Emmett, Jesse and Virginia. Most of the images were staged by Mann, but she managed to capture feeling that she and her camera were absent. These casual interactions become something that is timeless. If you look at this work, you would think that the fluid moments are captured spontaneously with a 35mm camera. But she chose, obviously, not to go the easy route and works with a large 8x10 camera. An important factor contributing to the appeal of this work is how all her children are extremely expressive and also extremely good looking. There's something both ordinary and mythological about these images. By combining reality with fiction, she's produced results that leave the viewer a little unsettled. They have very little in common with the mommy blog snaps that one finds on social media. These images show a sophistication and depth that comes with a unique vision. Even though only 13 of the 65 images show nudity, the response to this work was at times quite extreme. She was accused of exposing her children's bodies to paedophiles. The Wall Street Journal ran a photograph of four-year-old Virginia and used black bars to censor the image. A radio host also tore up copies of her book to you know, protest against the nudity. On top of this, a few of the images show childhood injuries. Emmett with a nosebleed, Jesse with a swollen eye. And this led some critics to challenge her right, I suppose, to record these scenes of distress. 
you really have to wonder how these critics have the time to kind of think this stuff up. Unlike what happened with Robert Maplethorpe's work, the disapproval of these photographs never went as far as litigation. Another photographer, Jock Sturges, he did images of nude prepubescent girls and at one time his images were confiscated by the FBI. Mann consulted with a federal prosecutor and he warned her that if she included eight of these photographs in a travelling exhibition, she risked being arrested. Society has shifted significantly since the 90s. In the US right now, there's controversy about whether sexually explicit material should be made available to kids in school libraries. One would think that after all of this negative attention, she might have turned to an easier, safer subject. But Mann was determined to explore a connection with the South. Because Southern USA has been tied so closely to slavery, it's still viewed by much of the North as a backward, racist place. It's seen as a dark and tainted land. The Great Depression reinforced the association of Southern landscape with violence and backwardness. And the work of the FSA photographers such as Dorothy Lang and Walker Evans during the 1930s portrayed the post-Civil War South as a hard and cruel space. Man is fiercely loyal to her southern roots and wanted to explore the complexity of these spaces and how she reconciles her love for the people and the land against the backdrop of its thorny past. If that wasn't enough, she then took on the touchy subject of the Civil War battlefields and the black water swamps and forests where African Americans took refuge after escaping enslavement. Her photographs are very expressive and say more about her complex feelings about these spaces rather than trying to provide exacting details of the space itself. She chose to use wet plate collodion techniques which were, they were used during the Civil War era photographers. That was 150 years earlier. It's a very fiddly process which is prone to defects and scratches and peeling emulsions. She intentionally accentuates these kind of happy accidents. She retrofitted the back of her suburban vehicle and set up a darkroom and she used tea and dirt to tint her prints. The photographs convey a ghostly mystery that matches the landscape's haunted past. Collodion produces strange visual results because it isn't equally sensitive to all colors. It registers blue, violet and ultraviolet really strongly and other colours appear almost like black. Mann visited the Tallahatchie River in Mississippi, where a 14-year-old Emmett Till was br brutally murdered by two white men in 1955. This incident fueled the civil rights movement at the time. A few critics have tried to minimize Mann's portrayal of the southern landscape by contrasting her work with that of Ansel Adams. But this is a really strange criticism, given that Adams was using an almost 
scientifically straight photographic approach for his landscape. While man was using an almost anti-science method and purposely avoiding realism. Probably her most thorny series is a project called Men, shot between 2006 and 2015. They feature hazy images of young, shirtless, African-American males. These pictures are intimate, but unlike the portraits of her husband, they don't feel personal. There's an ambiguous quality to the figures, as if man is trying but failing to see them. And in fact, that's what prompted man to do this work. Man had had a, a very significant relationship with her childhood caretaker called Gigi. But bl the black men around her, although they were present, seemed, they seemed to blend into the landscape. Her exploration delves into ideas of segregation and the male body being viewed as a form of property during the time of slavery. These images were like a red rag to a bull. Recently, there's been fierce debate about whether it's appropriate for white artists to photograph black people at all. It's thought that it's exploitation of blackness and some call it cultural appropriation. She was accused of a whole series of crimes ranging from avoiding her family's racist past, protecting her white Southern identity from self-examination, using black male subjects to exercise her own white guilt and being an unconstructed southerner. So looking back on her career of 40 years, Sally Mann has shown herself to be willing to take on the difficult themes of her time. She is both a visual poet and a fighter. I'm not sure whether I would be as emphatic as Time magazine to say that she's America's best photographer but I would put her right up there with the A-team. If you like, take some time to explore work. There's a lot of depth and complexity to be found. I'll see you next time, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do, it really helps. Thanks.